1940s, World War II, German occupied territories. A criminal Nazi regime gives unlimited power to frighteningly dangerous and unintelligent individuals, a power that should have never belonged to them. Influenced by Nazi ideology, these individuals are willing to commit horrific crimes in the name of what they believe to be the Aryan master race. After the war, they would become infamous for their sadistic and brutal treatment of prisoners. One of these torturous monsters was Hans Moser. Hans Moser was born on the 7th of April 1906 in Darmstadt, then part of the German Empire, and he was a merchant by profession. In October 1929, he joined the Nazi party, and in July 1931, he joined the SS. Moser had been posted to various concentration camps such as Hinzert, Neuengammer, and Auschwitz before he was sent to Mittelbaudora concentration camp in May 1944, where he committed his worst crimes. Hans Moser was a sadist, and he enjoyed torturing the prisoners who were forced to work 14 hours a day and did not have access to even basic hygiene. The slave laborers from Mittelbaudora were used not only for the production of V weapons, such as the V1 flying bomb and V2 rockets, which were aimed primarily at London, but also to extend the nearby tunnels in Konstein, which was a hill that served as a natural protection against the Allied bombing for the underground factory named Mittelwerk, in which the V weapons were produced. As a protective custody camp leader, Moser's responsibilities were discipline and sanitation, and his only superior was the camp commandant. Moser did everything to make the suffering of the inmates as terrible as possible. When the prisoners were brought into his office for interrogation, screams of the poor victims could be heard from within as he was beating them brutally. Hans Moser also participated in hangings. He also used to receive hanging bonuses, which consisted of one third of a liter of schnapps, 250 grams of special sausage, and one package of cigarettes. During executions by hanging, he often cut the ropes of the prisoners while they were still alive. He enjoyed prolonging their suffering in desperation, and would then shoot them to death without any remorse. He was even seen shooting at the prisoners who had been hanged, even though they were already dead. With the same joy and cruelty, he hanged two prisoners when they attempted to escape. On one occasion when Mirza got drunk in the kitchen, he started to shoot at the prisoners who were passing by, killing two of them. One of the reasons why the starving prisoners had almost nothing to eat was that their food had been stolen by the SS personnel. Mirza was laughing when he was questioned about it, saying that the prisoners were receiving too much to eat anyway. When it seemed to Musa that the prisoners were not working hard enough, he ordered either 25 lashes or imprisonment for them. On one occasion, he said to one inmate, the same way, with the same pleasure as you shoot deer, I shot a human being. When I came to the SS and had to shoot the first three persons, my food didn't taste good for three days. But today, it is a pleasure. It is a joy for me. In early April 1945, as the American 3rd Armored Division was advancing towards Mittelbaudora, Hans Moser was a transport leader during the evacuation of the prisoners from the camp. The Nazi regime needed the prisoners as slave labor, and the Nazis wanted to remove all the evidence of the horrors and brutality the poor inmates had experienced. The main objective of this particular death march was to transport the prisoners to the other camps, such as Bergen-Belsen, Sachsenhausen or Neuengammer by train or by foot. Those who could no longer walk were killed. The largest atrocity of this death march occurred on the 13th of April 1945 in the area of a town called Gardelegen. Out of 4,000 prisoners who arrived here, more than 1,000 were too weak or sick to continue marching any further. After they were forcibly taken into a large barn, the SS guards barricaded the walls and set fire to gasoline-soaked straw. 1,016 inmates were burned alive, suffocated, or shot by the SS as they tried in desperation to escape by digging under the barn's walls. This inhumane tragedy 
became known as the Gardelegen Massacre. When on the following day, the US 102nd Infantry Division entered Gardelegen, they were horrified. Dead bodies were everywhere, while the barn was still smoldering. On the 21st of April 1945, the local commander of the 102nd Infantry Division ordered 300 local men from the town of Gardelegen to give the murdered prisoners a proper burial. The German civilians had to exhume 586 bodies from the trenches and recover 430 bodies from the barn, placing each in an individual grave. After years of Nazi propaganda, the Germans could see with their own eyes the atrocities of the so-called master race, which demonstrated how it could master only crime, cruelty, and sadism. Such crimes could not be left unpunished. In the end, justice finally caught up with Mirza when he was arrested by the Allies and tried at the Dora trial, which was part of the Dachau trials. Hans Mirza denied everything, saying he had never either tolerated brutal treatment of the prisoners, nor killed anyone. He even claimed that he had never had a conversation about his pleasure in killing the inmates and accused the British and Americans of beating him and malnutrition. However, his lies did not help him escape justice. On the 30th of December, 1947, the US military tribunal found Hans Mirza guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity and sentenced him to death by hanging. He was 42 years old when he was executed on the 26th of November, 1948. There were no tears shed for Hans Mirza. Thanks for watching the World History Channel and don't miss our next videos. Click the subscribe button now for more interesting clips. Give us a like and see you in the following episode.